Hey, how's it going? Um, so, still locked down. Still not been able to get out, really. So I'm kind of waiting for the rules to change so I can get a lift and actually go in someone's car, which we're not allowed to do at the minute. Um, there's the lake nearby, so I'm going to try that out as well at some point. So hopefully we'll actually be able to get out and do some, some actual fishing. But in the meantime, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to tell you a little bit about my eyesight um, and then sort of what's led me to do this. So my I have a genetic eye condition. It's something I've had since I was born. Um, it's quite rare. Um, the last figures that I were given was that it's about one in 30 or 30 or 40,000. I had been told a lot more before, so I do need to double check those numbers. In fact, what I'll do is I'll double check and I'll stick them right here, the right number. Um, but yeah, it's quite rare. I think there's a lot of people that probably have it that don't realize they have it because you kind of see, sort of normally, but just don't have any colour. So people just sort of assume that they're just colour blind, but they're not. They've got what I've got. So my condition is something called rod monochromatism. It's a form of achromatopsia. Achromatopsia has a couple of different variants. Um, the type I have is rod monochromatism, which in itself as well can excuse me, can be varied. Not one person has the same sight as the other when it comes to rod monochromatism. So there will be people that might have um, a tiny bit of colour vision, whereas others won't have any at all. So the condition I have kind of has three main elements to it. No, the colour vision um, being completely non-existent for me, so I have zero colour vision whatsoever. I um, I, I don't really have any concept of what colour is, so this bit is quite always quite difficult to explain. I just basically see in shades of grey. Um, to give you an example, um, if you watch something like um, Schindler's List, I know that's a black and white movie, but has some elements of colour in it. Um, if, if you're a Walking Dead fan, there's a an episode of Walking Dead where um, it time lapses, and depending on the time that you're of the, the part of the the episode, it will be black and white or colour. In those situations, I can't tell which bit is black and white or which bit is colour. It all looks the same to me. So that might give you a bit of an idea. I always tell people the easiest way is really, it's like my life is a black and white movie, basically. Um, the other element is my detailed vision. So my detailed vision isn't great. I've been told when I've done eye tests before that my scoring on the charts is about half of what somebody with 20-20 vision would have. So if you've got good 20-20 vision, even if you've got glasses and you've got good 20-20 vision with your glasses, imagine it half that, <laughs> which I guess is probably quite hard to do, and you've basically got where I sit. Stuff isn't fuzzy, it doesn't blur. My vision, I guess, is quite sharp when I'm looking at something that I can see well um, but as you get sort of further away and the smaller things get I just can't see the detail of them whatsoever so that affects me when I've got uh, recognising people's faces so you can't get real close to somebody's face because that's weird um, but so you know some, seeing someone walking down the street until they get really close I won't always necessarily know who they are if it's somebody I know, I tend to rely on looking at their, how they walk or the sound that they make when they're walking towards me. Um, you know, those kind of things help me out a little bit. The third element to my condition is light sensitivity. So the sun, even if it's really not sunny outside, if, even if the light is being dispersed by the clouds a lot, um, that can really affect me. Um, so I'll often wear like sunglasses outside um, the worst kind of conditions for me are when it's been snowing and it's sunny outdoors or when it's been raining and it's snowy outdoors. Everybody probably finds that difficult, but for me, it's just that extra, extra level of annoyance because the, the sun really bothers my eyes sometimes. Um, I guess with that, it's, 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 it's just that I squint all the time as a result. So throughout my 
my teenage years, um, meeting fellow young people, they would either think I was stoned um, or just really tired. Both of which were pretty cool and fine with <laughs> with other teenagers. So it was, didn't really pose that much of a problem. Um, but quite often I'd get asked if I had any stuff to sell. Um, anyway, so that's sort of the main three parts of my condition. I do also have something called um, nystagmus. Nystagmus is an involuntary shake of the eye. So I could look at somebody and be talking to them and my eyes might shake over and look off somewhere else. Um, or if I am tired, then they'll just shake around. It doesn't impact on how I see. Um, I barely notice it. Um, but it's just that involuntary movement, um, which does make it difficult for certain procedures. So, for example, um, laser eye surgery wouldn't work for me. Couldn't get it done. Um, so that's basically it in a nutshell. Um, if you're interested in the genetical side of things, um, the, the defective gene that I have is the CNGB3 gene. Um, there's loads of information out there about the condition. Um, impact wise, what it does to me is that with those three, all those things, those elements, I can't drive um, at all in this country, probably any country I, could, I can, wouldn't be able to drive in or get a license. Um, there are some jobs that I wouldn't be able to do. I wouldn't be able to be an electrician, for example, because you rely on some colour to look at the, the different wires, things like that. Um, you know, so there are jobs like that that I wouldn't be able to do. Um, I've career-wise, I've worked all of my all of my work in life, so it's not impacted me on my choice of profession. But I find that as long as I've got people around me and I'm part of a good team, then I can crack on and do whatever. I have met other people with my condition that do some really awesome jobs, so it doesn't impact you that much. It's mainly the travel and the colour, those kind of things that uh, that causes a problem. Day-to-day -day life, um, again, it's the same. You know, there, I've had some times where I've been quite upset, disappointed by it. You know, I haven't been able to teach my kids colours and things like that. But you just get on with it. With you know, there's nothing I can do. So really, the I guess the main impact that I face in relation to fishing um, is probably a few things. I mean, the detail, the detailed vision does prevent me from seeing quite far away um, or seeing small objects or, or things in the water. Um, so I couldn't go out necessarily and stalk fish. Um, I couldn't necessarily see surface movement. Um, I mean, I could possibly hear the surface movement and splashing, but that's why things like carp fishing are really difficult for me. Um, definitely a challenge, though, and I don't like to back away from a challenge, so I'll be pursuing carp fishing at some point um, to see you know, if I can do find a, a method of doing that that, that helps me out. Um, the other thing would be the colour. So in law fishing in particular, I found that there's a lot of people that like lures that match the colours of, of um, prey fish um, and things like that. And, and the, the colour of the water and then the colour of the lure that you want to use, depending on that, and then the type of fish that you're after. And there's lots of elements that come into play with the colour side of things, which... Obviously, I'm going to struggle with because I don't see colours. I guess the other thing is fish identification. Um, there will be fish that... I mean, I'm, I'm primarily, at the minute, I'm focusing on trying to catch perch and, um, and pike and things like that. They are quite standout fish. You know what they look like. There might be smaller species or other species that I've not come across, really, that I'm not going to know what they are if their colour determine helps determine what kind of species they are. Um, and then the other thing I guess is f I can't do float fishing. F that's a given because there's no way I can see a float out in the water bobbing about. Um, so for me, it's all about fishing that I can I can touch the rod, I can feel the rod, I can feel the line, and I can feel when I get a bite. That's the, the main way I get bite indication is through through touch and feel. Um, so that's probably the main difficulties I'm going to come up with that's what that I know of anyway there might I might sort of later down the line get stumped by something else that that I can't that I can't do or whatever because of my sight um 
but yeah, so that's pretty much it. I mean, and this is the reason why I wanted to do this, this share my journey is because there's, I, when I was doing some research on fishing for somebody with a visual impairment, I didn't find a huge amount of stuff out there. There certainly was some bits and pieces, um, but nothing that really helped me. So this is this was really why I wanted to do what I'm doing. Um, and if it works and people like it, then awesome. Otherwise, it's just me putting some videos out and, hey, that's cool. I'm, I'm happy with that too. Um, but yeah, that's, that's pretty much it. I have had surgery to try, uh, some experimental surgery to try and see if they can sort of fix it, if you like. Um, but that hasn't really worked. But it was all down to sort of trial and error anyway with that. Um, you know, so yeah, there's loads of stuff to check out. Have a look into it if you're interested. I'm always more than happy to answer questions and talk about it. So if there's anything that you want to ask, definitely please do. Um, if you have the condition yourself and you've clicked on this video because I'm going to call it a chromatopsia, um, there are some great um, social media pages out there. A chromatopsia UK is one that I'm on. Um, there's a few others. And yeah, let me know if uh, if you've got any questions or, or want to talk about it anymore, or even if you know you've got kids or you've got it and you just want some more info. Um, but that's pretty much it. Hope uh, that's been interesting. I mean, I kind of live with it, so it's not always that interesting to me. But other people seem to quite find it find it quite interesting. Um, but yeah, there you go. That's that. Um, catch you soon. Try not to fall in. <laughs>